assalamu alaikum welcome to wetlek today i am going to discuss uh, the stomach development in ruminants ruminant stomach actually consists of four compartments and these compartments are rumen reticulum omasum and abomasum and these all uh, components occupy 3 by 4 of the abdominal cavity rumen reticulum and omasum constitute the four gut or proventriculus and have a non glandular mucous membrane which is lined with stratified squamous epithelium abomasum is uh, lined only with glandular mucous membrane esophagus opens between the rumen and reticulum in in the form of a shallow arc or we can say shallow vault now let's discuss the embryonic development of ruminant stomach during embryonic stages uh, the stomach of ruminants originates from the esophagus which we called uh, here as primitive gut first of all uh, the distal end of esophagus or this primitive foregut enlarges and gives rise to a uh, primitive stomach which is a spindle shaped structure then from this primitive stomach other four compartments of the ruminant stomach develop and then differentiate from the lesser curvature of this primitive stomach first omasum and esophageal groove evolve so the first structures that evolve from this uh, primitive stomach are omasum and esophageal groove then the body of uh, primitive stomach enlarges and forms rumen and reticulum then after the formation of rumen and reticulum the caudal part of this primitive uh, primitive stomach gives rise to abomasum in this way uh, first the primitive stomach develops from the enlargement of distal end of uh, four gut that is esophagus so primitive stomach first develops from esophagus then primitive stomach gives rise to omasum and esophageal groove from its lesser curvature then the body of this primitive stomach enlarges and forms rumen and reticulum and at, at last the caudal part of this uh, uh, this primitive stomach gives rise to abomasum finally when all the all these structures have been formed uh, then the greater omentum fuses with the greater curvature of the abomasum and to the left side of rumen greater omentum is actually a, a large flat adipose tissue layer that covers intraperitoneal organs and it prevents the parietal and visceral peritoneum of the abdominal cavity from adhering to each other so it fuses with the greater curvature of abomasum to the left side of rumen and in this way it covers whole the whole of the stomach inside rumen there are various membranous foldings or invaginations of the rumen these infoldings divide the rumen into dorsal and ventral sacs now let's come to the postnatal development of the ruminant stomach in a neonate the first three components rumen reticulum and omasum are not developed and functional while abomasum is largely developed and functional so abomasum is only the developed and functional unit of neonate as a neonate consumes fluid diet in early early days of its life uh, the ingesta directly passes into the abomasum via esophageal groove because rumen is non functional uh, in a neonate in the early days of its life but when the young young one starts eating the solid diet the esophageal groove opens and the food passes into the rumen and in this way rumen starts to develop gradually the development of rumen directly depends upon the nature of diet and in this way refugees and coarse fodder cause an early rumen development therefore placing the young one on pastures along with fluid diet of milk ensures quick uh, rumen maturation and hence early weaning of the young one so as long as the young one consumes only fluid diet its rumen is not developed but when it starts eating solid diet it results in the development of rumen and if young one is placed on pastures along with fluid diet then it results in early weaning of the young one the capacity of whole the stomach of ruminants uh, depends upon the age of the animal and size of the animal in the cattle of medium size uh, the capacity of stomach is 115 to 150 liters but the extreme range is 95 to 95 liters to 230 liters the relative sizes of omasum abomasum rumen and reticulum also change with the age so in a neonate calf 
the rumen and reticulum together have about half a capacity of the abomasum so the uh, total capacity or combined capacity of rumen and reticulum in a neonate calf uh, is uh, the com the combined their combined capacity uh, is only the half of that of abomasum but at the age of about 8 weeks uh, the combined capacity of rumen and reticulum equals to that of abomasum and at the age of 12 weeks the combined capacity of rumen and reticulum is twice to that of abomasum omasum also grows slowly during this period and at about half years of the age of calf uh, the omasum's capacity equals to that of abomasum's capacity after complete maturation the relative sizes of these four compartments of the stomach uh, vary among species for example in cattle uh, the rumen occupy uh, the completely matured cattle uh, rumen occupies 80% reticulum occupies 5% omasum occupies 7% and abomasum occupies 8% of the stomach in sheep and goat uh, completely matured sheep and goat rumen is 71% reticulum occupies 8% omasum occupies 2% and abomasum occupies 19% of the stomach now let's come to the development of transport and absorptive functions of git so these transport and absorptive functions of gastrointestinal tract also change with the age and diet of animal after parturition uh, the calf is fed with uh, colostrum because the colostrum contains antibodies and the intestinal mucosa of the calf is highly permeable to antibodies immediately after the parturition and after a short time uh, this permeability for antibodies uh, ceases after a short time in ruminants the absorptive function of rum rumen and small intestine increases when an animal is placed on solid or fibrous diet its reason is because when animal consumes solid or fibrous diet uh, then the process of fermentation occurs and it produces volatile fatty acids and those volatile fatty acids are then absorbed in the rumen and small intestine and in this way the absorptive function of rumen and small intestine increases on the solid diet in case of non ruminants like horse and rabbit uh, the absorptive ability of small intestine decreases Uh, because most of the solid and fibrous diet is uh, fed to the large intestine uh, large gut for the fermentation so in case of non ruminants the absorptive ability of small intestine for volatile fatty acids uh, decreases while the absorptive ability of large intestine for volatile fatty acids increases so in short we can say that age and solid diet uh, determine the absorbability of uh, gastrointestinal tract Now let's talk about the enzymatic development of gastrointestinal tract. So for the proper absorb uh, for, for proper digestion enzymes are always needed and these are produced by the glands as per body requirements. But species differences determines the type and amount and time and uh, uh, the type of enzyme amount of enzyme and the time when will be uh, when it will be secreted. so in in case of pigs slavery amylase is uh, pres is present in very low amounts at birth is very less at birth and when it feeds on starch the enzyme production increases uh, similarly hydrochloric acid and proteases are also in low amounts and then with the aging of animal these enzymes uh, the proteases also uh, increase in number it is because uh, when an animal when the pig uh, consumes fluid diet then these enzymes play, have no uh, an important role so their amount increases only with the aging of animal in case of similarly in case of ruminants pancreatic amylase is less as compared to in horse as this pancreatic amylase causes starch digestion so due to the inadequacy of uh, amylase activity in the small intestine of ruminants the digestion and utilization of starch may be limited similarly lactase is abundant than sucrase in early life in both poly and monogastric animals uh, then with advancing age uh, the sucrase content increases in non ruminants and lactase content decreases so the enzymatic development occurs according to the nature of diet uh, age and species i have said that lactase is abundant than sucrase in early life of both poly and monogastric animals 
its reason is because in the milk uh, the sugar comes primarily from lactose and therefore lactose is known as milk sugar so for the digestion of lactose the uh, young one needs lactase uh, than sucrase because it has to digest only lactose lactose sugar so its lactase content is uh, is more but as as the young one starts eating solid diet then its uh, lact uh, and uh, uh, its uh, its, uh, its sucrose con sucrase content uh, will go on increasing now let's discuss the factors which affect the stomach development first the development of stomach de uh, depends that either the animal is drought animal or not so in case of drought animals there is a slower development of stomach as compared to milking animals the next factor is nutrition and health care of the mother during gestation period if the mother is suffering from a severe health problem during gestation period uh, then this health problem will be transferred from mother to the embryo and it will have negative effect on the postnatal and prenatal development rate of stomach development also depends upon the nutrition and environmental management and if there is poor management and nutrition then it causes slower uh, development of stomach then the other factor is maintenance of the young one on fluid diet only as we have discussed that as the young uh, as long as the young one uh, feeds only fluid diet uh, then uh, at that time up to that time its rumen cannot uh, cannot be developed the rate of rumen development depends upon the uh, feeding of solid diet so if a young one consumes only fluid diet then the development of its rumen microflora is decreased and in this way its rate of stomach development is increase uh, is decreased similarly parasitic infestation also slows down the rate of stomach development similarly accidental access of animal to some uh, chemical toxin can also set up a long lasting inflammatory process in the stomach and this leads to the abnormal growth or development of the stomach and if a young one is isolated from ruminants uh, then it delays the microflora establishment and prevents the microfauna and ultimately uh, its effects are that the stomach development and growth rate is slowed down it occurs because uh, there are some bacteria uh, the bacteria and protozoa uh, uh, develop in the young one through direct contact with any other ruminant so the isolation of young one from ruminants has adverse effects on the uh, growth and development of the stomach of young one